Hi everyone. We just had a little bit of a giggle because I started the video on my personal page on Facebook so people that have no idea about stitching just got a really short video. <laughs> so starting again. Um, this week we're going to do a little bit more about fabric types. So and it's not stop laughing Amber please. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> um, okay so fabric types and the diff but not this is not about the colours and how the colours take to the fabrics. This is more that people wanted to have a look at um, the differences between even weaves and like linens and see if we can get a close-up and the difference between opals and plain fabric. So we'll see if we can get some close-ups and give you a good description of the different types of fabrics if you've never had a look or never seen them before. Um, Another question I got asked last week that we'll talk about is where to start on your fabric. Um, I mentioned last week that I was a middle starter. Um, so I'm going to show you how I find the middle on a fabric because there's a couple of people that were like, I don't know how to do that. And also I'll show you how to start if you like a left-hand corner or bottom or top left-hand corner, um, how to find your starting point. Um, also, Belinda Scott last week did a video as well on the bead containers. Um, I found the website that I got my one off, so I'll go on to that in a minute and find out the actual name of the bead container. But she po like posed a question, if, if someone had the original American version that everyone was getting from Amazon, um, or, you know, US sellers that were easy to get over there and the Spotlight one that we should do a comparison. So I went to Spotlight and I got the bead container and the little things that come, the little little storage things that come in it. So we'll compare the two. So you've got an idea of the different price, if they're the same, if they're different. Um, so we'll do that. And last, threads. I haven't got a lot of threads here, but I do have some. So I'm going to go through and show you some different types of threads. So you get an up close look at them rather than pictures on the website, because like you all know, the website quite often, um, the photos that the suppliers give us aren't always that accurate. It's the same with hand dyed fabrics. It's one of those things really, really hard to get a photo of. So we'll have a look and see if we can get some good vision on that. So st here we were before I realised by the people that were joining that we weren't even on Colour Cascade Fabric Group, that we were on the personal page, is plain fabrics because I think this might be easier to see than the coloured fabric. So I'm just going to take the camera so I can see um, what you guys are seeing so I can see if it's doing a good job. So this is an opal ada it's uh, 14 count and see that glitter in the fabric that is what you get when you are buying opal or opalescent as it's sometime not sometimes known fabric the only difference between that and plain is that glitter through your fabric and that glitter is actually woven in to the fabric when it's manufactured it's not sprayed on um, I have bought fabric before that was um, advertised I guess on the site as opalescent and it was not opalescent fabric it was plain fabric with spray on glitter on it and as soon as you touched it the glitter just rubs off so be careful of that um, so that, as you can see, I've got the 14 count because I thought it would be easier to see. Um, and here is the, this is the, um, this is Cashel Opal. So this is a linen. And this is actually good because I can see these things. See those little marks under there? If, um, see that? This is why people don't really like linen. Like the people that I know that have stitched on linen, this is why they don't like it, is because of these little like bumps in the fabric. 
I think they're called slubs. And there's a big one just up here. See that? That That is the only reason, I think, that some people don't like to stitch on linen. And another reason, if I can get... The holes are not as even as even weave. They're very um, all over the place. If you can see the weave in this, each little square is not perfectly square like even weave is it's a little bit out you've got all those slabs but I took the I took the plunge from being you know from going from even weave to linen so you can see a big one there um I took the plunge and I have to tell you once you start stitching on it it's no big deal it's really not and the linens um especially Belfast take the colours so well so it's really worth having a go I mean if you've got a design that you want a really really dark intense colour like a good one example would be Sorcerer um, that really dark dark blue um, go for and you want opal go for linen because the um, Lugana opal doesn't dye anywhere near as dark as the linen opal does this one here is Monaco. Now, Monaco is a fabric that's not really that popular. Um, it dyes beautifully, and it's a really nice, thick, like thick fabric to the touch compared to all the other fabrics. Um, it's a really sturdy, solid fabric. Now, it's my understanding is that Monaco is a linen but you would never know because i'm just trying to get a close up that weave looks more like even weave and there are very very rarely any slubs in monaco fabric so if you again you want linen but you want it to be more even weave monaco is the way to go and it's one of the cheapest fabrics it's just this is one of the fabrics that's almost the same price as ada so it's a cheap way to go. Um, I know a lot of my customers love Monaco because when the sales are on, we get a lot of big um, lay-bys for the big sizes of Monaco because it, it does die well. It's cheap um, and it's a good alternative to even weave. Um, okay. Now this one here is, this is 20 count Lugana which is a good one to have because um, 20 count comes in both Ada and Lugana. And you can see there, I'm going to get the Ada out as well. So you've got a comparison, but see how nice and clear those holes are and how big they are um, and how even those holes are compared to the linen. And that, that's the difference between even weave and linens. And there's no slubs. There's never any slubs in the even weave fabric. Um, I'm going to have a look because I don't think I picked a piece up. Um, but I have some in the studio session pile. Um, just bear with me for a second. I'm going to find a piece of 20 count. Um, Okay, let's go with this piece of yesterday's. Now this is 20 count Ada. And as you can see, um, the holes are still pretty good to um, see. But I think the Lugana, the holes are actually a little bit bigger and much easier to see than the Ada. And the Lugana in the 20 count is really, really soft. It's just so soft and it's nice and thick too. So it does dye up really nicely. Um, yeah, so that's the 20 count and that's just the like the difference between the Ada. The Ada seems a little bit more tighter and smaller, if that makes sense, than the, than the um, Lugana. You can definitely see the difference in there. 
So that's the 20 count Lugana. And this is this one is 32 count Belfast. And this one's I actually think the 32 count is not as slubby. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word as the cashel. There is a little bit in there. Um 32 count, I'm not a 32 count stitcher, so I that to me, um, maybe this isn't 32, maybe that's 28. Actually, this is not 32, it's 28 count because I can see. I can see through the holes and 32 count, um, I generally can't. I have to get the thing out for that. I'm not actually sure because it does look too small to be 28. I think it's 32. I'd have to get the little measure out. But that gives you an idea. See that big long line down there? Um, when you get linen, if you get stuff like that, they're not imperfections in the fabric. Um, that's the way linen is. Every single piece of linen you get is going to have that in it. So um, don't be surprised and don't be shocked. And don't, um, you, yeah, it's not something that we'd give a refund for because that is the nature of that fabric. That's just the way it is. Now, this is 28 count Lugana. And Lugana is... The, the 28 count especially is very, very thin, I find, compared to other fabrics. And you can see the even, how even the weave is in there. Um, so that is, and that's probably the most popular fabric. The 32 count even um, Lugana is a little bit more smoother Um and a, I would say even a little tiny little bit thicker. It's it's just so much nicer to the touch than Lugana. I find Lugana to the feel, like to the touch, feels rough. And that's why I use Thread Heaven with this one because it does tend to shred my thread. Um, so that's that one. I'm just going through now to have a look at the comments. Hi, Belinda. Yep, we'll do that comparison with the bead containers I took your challenge on and thought it was a um, a good thing to have a look at and talk about because just from appearances they look exactly the same okay so that is the fabrics now I'm going to keep one out because I'm going to show you I'll do the one that we can actually see really well so I'll get the 14 count one out um, and I'm going to get Amber to take the camera in a sec because I'm going to need it and we'll sh I'll just I think it was Monique Bill that asked me this question and I have been asked by a couple of people in the past to show them how to do it. So this is where to find your starting point for those who um, are not have only ever started up the top or they kind of, I know some people just take a little bit of a guess where to start. Um, so this is how I work it out. Again, not the wrong or the right way. This is just my way. So I'll hand over the camera to Amber. Okay. So the first thing I do, as you can see, it's just been folded up willy-nilly. So you can't really start with that. So what you need to do is get your piece of fabric and you need to find, like, get the edges all lined up nicely and fold it that way. This is for a middle start. So you get that folded up nicely that way and then you fold it over again, that way. So what happens is this corner here, that corner that's not the folded bits, is your middle. And what I do is I find that corner. I mean, it doesn't have to be very, you know, perfect unless you've not left yourself much of a border. If you know your fabric's a little bit smaller than it should be, try and do it as perfect. But if, you know, you've got room to move, it's all good. And I put a needle through that. And that is where I would start. So I would just pull my needle back and say, put it through that hole. And I would start stitching in the hole next to it, one of the holes next to it. And that will be my middle 
my starting point. I, to find the middle of the chart, because I found a chart the other day that didn't have the little arrows in it. I'm gonna grab. Um, I'm gonna grab one. I've got one just over here. Um, I'll just grab this one just to show you. I'm tripping over everything. Um, just gonna open this one to have a look. I'm gonna rip my sticker. Got mine. All right, we can put a new stick on in. Um, a lot of designs, the majority of them, will have these arrows. Now, that's what these arrows are for. So what you need to do is find the one that's got the arrow on the top, the bottom, and both sides. Let's have a look. So we'll go down... I'd say it would be around here somewhere. There's I should have been more prepared. See, it's always one thing in every one of my videos <laughs> that we get. Um, but you guys know that I like know what I'm talking about, right? You get the page that has the arrows on all four corners, and we're definitely gone too far. But yeah, so you'd have the like you'd have the arrows up the top and the bottom, and these ones at the side. And let's just say, for instance, this was arrow was up here and down here. So your middle very middle of your design will be in this in this area here that is um where's 32? here we go here we go there's the middle i had it upside down so you've got the arrows on both on all sides so that little circle there we've got the lines coming through that little circle just here is your middle, very middle of your design. And that's where I start when I'm starting in the middle. I think I've only started one project at the top left corner and that was Cashmere, the one that I was showed you last week that I'm doing on the plain 18 count um, fabric. Um, that's because... I think I didn't want to risk starting in the middle because I don't plan on stitching all the white in that design and I think the middle was pretty much where all the white is. So I thought I'll start at the top corner where all the colour is and we'll work our way um, out to that white because I don't want to stitch the white. So that is that. Now for those who like to start on the very first page, the, the way to work this out will have to be um, if you've gone with fabric that has a two inch border or a three inch border, um, you always need a border on your work. You never want to stitch right out to the edge because you can't frame it. You, I mean, ha you just can't frame. The fabric needs to go around and folded around to be framed so you need a border so it's up to you whether you've chosen the two inch or three inch I always go three inch so what you do um, look for my little what are you doing? I'm banging stuff around here sorry <laughs> oh my gosh I can't <laughs> um, this is all in centimetres too so what's an inch two and a half centimetres so five eight and a half centimetres I need to go down that's three inches let's just do it for two just for demonstration purposes so we'll do two and a half say so two and a half centimetres is an inch so we'll do five centimetres down this is what I do so five centimetres down and then five centimetres 
across and that right there is well the closest hole to that is just there that is your left hand starting point and that gives you the three or two inches in this case up the top and two inches there and your stitching will start there and that is as easy as that that's how to do it um, I remember when I first started cross stitching everything seemed so Oh, it's like oh my god how am I going to do that I don't know how to like I just don't know how to do it it seems a little bit complicated but once you do things um, like I, mem I remember being scared of the big designs um, thinking oh, how am I ever going to do that how am I going to stitch that but the big designs are the easiest ones to do because they are all full crosses no specialty stitches and you just follow the pattern it's as easy as that um, I find um, which I I think I've got them just over here because we moved everything out of the bedroom to paint. Um, the, I did a whole series of the DMC Olga Gostens Australian Houses and they have so much back stitching, quarter stitches, French knots and they drove me insane but I loved them so I kept doing them. So that is that little part. Um, okay, let's have a look before we get to... The threads at these beading containers now this one here is the spotlight one this one here is the one that I got from the polymer clay website she has them back on the site guys it's polymerclay.com.au or um, I've got it written down here. I've got it wrote it down. Over the rainbow, I think the shop's called, and it's the but the web address is polymerclay.com.au. What I've done, I even done a comparison of prices. The only difference I can see in this from here is that is not a lot. They look exactly the same. The handles are the same, the little clips are the same, the lid's the same. Um, if you, if I take out some of oh, the lids, <laughs> take the lid off. Um, the, you know, the trays are all exactly the same. Oops, stray beads. Um, they literally are exactly the same. When you go though to Spotlight, when you buy the one from Polly McClay, from the Polly McClay or Amazon for the American and UK girls, you get all of the beads in the tray. Um, I don't know, I don't recall seeing options for different size containers. Um, they just came with all the tiny, these are called the tiny containers. Um, yeah, so that's how it came. I didn't have to order extra anything. That's just how it was. Um, with the Spotlight one, you buy the container, and it was, the container was $21, and then you have to buy all of the containers separately. Now, this is a pack of 13, which would fit perfectly in one row. So, when I did a comparison with the Polly McClay one, I they put their prices up, so I think these went nuts. They went nuts with these, and they took them off the site for a while, probably to order more. Um, and the price is definitely more than what I paid because at the moment, if you went right now and bought one of these from their website, it's $64.95, and the cheapest postage on the site is $16.95. So total was $81.90 for all of that. Um that's from that website and what surprised me was when I worked out if I was to buy all the tiny containers to fit this and the tray it would cost me $86.95 from Spotlight so the Polly McClay still worked out five bucks cheaper if you want to go that way the only difference is going to be waiting for this one in the mail or instant gratification by getting that one as soon as you walk into a shop and the containers I'll just pop one out 
are exactly the same as what's in here. Although these might even, they're very tight. So you still got the flip lid. Um, you can see that they are, like comparison, exactly the same. Chris is laughing at me. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh, he's laughing at a Father's Day card. So that is the bead comparison trace. Their, their light is literally no difference. So for the Aussie girls, um, it's up to you where you want to go buy it. I couldn't find... Well, actually, I don't even know if I looked, but I couldn't find any other websites that had it other than the Polly McClay. That was the first. I think I, when I originally bought this one, I did look, and it was the only one I could find. Um, there may have been one other site, but the price was way dearer than the Polly McClay website. Um, so that, that's that comparison. So Belinda, um, yeah, I mean... For those that live out in the middle of nowhere, um, maybe better for you to jump online and buy one online. If you're down the road from a spotlight like I am, it's just 15 minutes down the road, go grab them. I'm just going to buy these bees as these containers as I need them. I'm not going to just, you know, that's another thing. If you want to go this way, you don't have to buy the whole lot all at once. You could just buy the site, the bee, um, the containers <laughs> as you need them. So. It's up to you. So that's that's the that's that. Now for some fun stuff. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Not only do I want to talk about the threads, I want to show you what I've done with some of the threads with some designs. And remember last week, which I never pulled it out, I want to show you. I'll get that now while we're at it. And I couldn't remember the designer. It was when we were doing the misfortunes and the um, bad luck and all that kind of stuff, that video. This was, and I remember the name, it's Joan Elliott. And I got it as a kit, in kit form. Um, I no longer have the packaging for this design, so I don't know if, is that upside down? I don't know if um, they use DMC in their kits. I don't know if they use some other kind of thread. I'm assuming that it is DMC because that's what I think it is. Um, oh, and those bead containers are in where all the beads are and the container is in a box um, and the, the little container, like the actual big tray is in a box, a big box, can't miss it. And the little containers were kind of two rows over, hanging on, um, they were hanging on things. I had to actually go looking for the little containers to put in it. And they're not next to each other. Well, they're not in my local spotlight anyway. They were completely like two row, two um, things down. And it's called, they're both called Crafter's Choice, um, both the tray and the um, containers. Going back to this. So this is a Joan Elliott kit that I had done, uh, I would say, 10 years ago. So, yeah, I don't have the packaging for it anymore. I have to assume someone may be able to correct me if they use DMC in their kits. Maybe there was a stage 10 years ago they didn't. I don't know. Um, lovely specialty stitching here, which I love. Just all back stitching. Um, but I washed it. And I can remember it looks it looked a lot worse when I did it. I was devastated. Now it's not so bad. But I'm going to go down. Can you see the fabric there? This ran through the fabric when I washed it. The, the DMC. Or it might not be DMC. It might be something completely different. I don't know. Um, it might not have been DMC. So if it was... And I'd have do have another one. I can't remember which one it is. There was a red, and I definitely know it was DMC. It was a red and a dark blue ran into the fabric when I washed it as well. So 
that's something to be aware of because um, I don't think anything that's been dyed, like you see here, is 100% colour fast. I mean, you can see that most of the other colours, even that purple didn't run, that dark blue didn't run, but this brown ran in pretty much everywhere where it was put um, when, when it was washed. You can see it there, the discoloration of the fabric. So that was one that I wanted to show you when I had a look at the, when we did the misfortunes video. Um, I'm sure that's Joan Elliott. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, but it was a kit I bought um, a long, long time ago. So that's that. Now, threads. I'm going to just show you a couple of these. These are new threads for... Um, Colorous from DMC, the new variegated, variegated threads, and they're really funky, the, this lot. They're very, very different from their usual, um, they've gone a little bit, I'd say they've gotten really game and experimented with different colors and um, done that. So that's, um, that's what these look like. There's another one. See, very, very different to what I would say DMC do. They've gone out on a limb, I reckon, <laughs> and gotten funky, which I really like them. I really like them. So that's the colorist, and they just are like normal cotton, your normal DMC. Um, that's those. I'm just seeing if there's anything on here about whether it's, you know, guaranteed colour fastness or anything. I don't think so. I don't know. Probably have to play it by ear with those. I'd say they would be because DMC are usually pretty good, but you just never know. Now, these are, I'm just going to check these out, some of my favourite most recent purchases for the business Threadworks thread this stuff is amazing they're beautiful um, this is cotton and I only stock the 20 yard skeins um, I think you can get them in five yards from other places, but I've only just got the 20 yards and it's 100% cotton. I would have to say this one right here, this is called Bradley's Balloons, is the most popular of the Threadworks threads by far. Definitely. It's amazing. Look at it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, one of my favourites, this is probably my favourite for obvious reasons, it's hot, hot pink um, and it's called Gillian's Sugar Plum. I've done, I've finished a um, project with this which is in here, it should be. I'm going to get Amber to take the phone for a sec. Where's my little heart? Um, it might be sitting on, I think I took it out and put it on top of something that's been moved in our crazy bedroom. Um, maybe on top of the box and the fabrics there, Amber, on top of the snake cage. Yeah, the, their colours are just really intense. It's 100% cotton. I have not washed the one that I have stitched with, so I can't comment on colour fastness. Even if I did wash it, I doubt because of the fabric that's, that it's on in the background, you would see it because I've used a really, really dark hand-dyed fabric anyway. So then again, that's why I didn't wash it, because of the darkness of the fabric and I pretty much know that that will run and it could potentially run through the threads 
um, so I didn't want to wash it. So they are some of, here's some more, some thread works. Like some beautiful, they've also got some beautiful pastel colours. Um, I love the pinks. That looks like, you know, it looks like candy floss. And here's one of my favourites. I'm pretty sure that's called, I'm sure that's Mosaic, which I have done. Um, and I'll get it out, it's just here. I'll get M to take the phone. This was an Alessandra Adelaide. Um, I think it was a stitch along. And that is done in mosaic thread. So that's what it looks like when it's done. So this is the, the type of thing I think these variegated hand dyed threads like cotton silks are really good to to use on because you can really customize it to what suits you um what you like rather than the recommended threads in um in the pattern and you can experiment with color which is what i love to do i love to play with different colored fabrics and different colored threads so um, as you can see, I don't know if you've had a look on the website, I use the supplier's photos of um, the colours. So they're not always that good. Um, so, yeah, that's why I wanted to just pull some out. You can see how, how gorgeous these actually are. I think that's fine wine, this one. Um, which I've done a project in that with that as well, which is this is a design that used to be on my website. Um, we had a whole series of them. Um, so that's that purple and the red writing, the red and purple writing. I think that is it's a thread works as well. And I think that was called Stepping Stones. So that gives you an idea. You just play with the with the patterns and the colours. Like purple and green go so well together. So that's why I chose to do the purple. Because I had that piece of fabric laying around. The pastel purples. Um, if you go onto the website, because I'm not sure of all of the names. And put in the number one one two five. It will give you. It will come up in the search button on the website, or you could just go to the Threadworks tab on the website, and um, just go through them and have a look at what. I mean, most of the most of the pictures are pretty good. There's just a couple that I think were very. They just don't show the true gorgeousness of the color the actual colors of the threads so that is thread works put them out of the way next i'm going to show you something else by thread works that someone asked me to order in i have never ever ever seen anything like this before i think it might have been angela um, this is like, I can't even imagine what this would be like to stitch. I mean, I'd have to give it a go. It's like fuzz. It's called Legacy, the Legacy Collection. Um, but yeah, they've got all these really cool colours in this fuzzy stuff, which is, um, I think, I'm pretty sure it was Angela Partridge. If it was you, Angela, and you watch this, I want to I want to see the stitching. I want to see what you've done with it if you've used it yet, because it might be to me one of those things that could possibly drive me absolutely batty, or I could love it. I don't know. It could be easy. Who knows? So that 
that's those. I've never seen a pattern for them, but that's them. One that we all um, have heard of in my group a lot because of the Mirabilias is the Water Lilies. Now this stuff is absolutely beautiful to stitch with. Um, I'm pretty sure they're, they're silk. They're 12 ply silk and they come in 6 yards or 5.5 metres each little bundle. Um, but the colours in these, and again, I don't think the, the website pictures that we're given for these even come close to showing how gorgeous they are. Like they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, and they're like I've stitched with these. This one I have stitched with and they are beautiful. Beautiful to stitch with, not a drama. And I wish I could find, <laughs> I'd love to have patterns that just had all water lilies in it. Imagine stitching with that. It would be so nice. And all the variegated colours. So that, they are some silks that are on the site, but they're not my silks. These are water uh, Karen collection water lilies. And Caitlin, you bring up a good point because it's not the first time that I've heard that and you're not the first person to say it. If you're going to use water lilies, again, don't wash your project when you finish because these are not colour fast. Um, they, people have done it and they run. And I'm just going to have a look and see if it says anywhere. It says on here, although our dyes are colour fast, be sure to test reds and dark colours, which is pretty much, I think, what we all give a warning about with our dyes. The dark colours, no matter how many times we as, you know, the manufacturers of the fabrics or threads wash it, there's still colours that just will continue to run. So, but, you know, coming from other stitches, they have had experiences of these running. So just be careful with those. So these silks um, in the water lilies. So those. Um... Go to some DMC variegated, which I'm pretty sure all of you know all about them. This is one of my favourites, the red and pink, and that is number 107. And another one of my favourites, which you saw last week with the ink circles, Cirque de Circles I'm doing, and that is 111, and that is the recommended cotton to use for that pattern. Um... I think this is probably the nicest colour I have ever used. I think it's real steampunky and like gives a really cool old metal effect. So that's why I really like that one. Um, I've been asked lately, I think it's Mirabilia's that have been putting them in their patterns. I think it's Mirabilia, I'm not sure, but satin threads. Again, they're variegated, kind of, very lightly, this one. This is very, very lightly variegated. Um, it's pretty much just a couple of shades, like very, very light shade of the one colour. Um, and that's, that feels absolutely beautiful, actually. I've never stitched with it. Um, I think there was a Mirabilia that had, a, had that in it. So I had to get some of that in. So if you want any satins, I can get it. I just don't have a lot on the website um, because I'm not going to order that until it's needed. And another one that people wanted me to get in were the DMC metallics you can kind of even tell by the look just by looking at these that they're they're a bit like chronic i would probably say they're a bit more like rainbow gallery in that they don't well you can see there actually 
I'm just trying to see, you can see that, um, how the ends of it, it's, a, it's going to be a pain to use, obviously, because it's, um, going to be hard to thread the needle because it just comes apart like that. Um, it doesn't stay nice and solid, which is, we all know, the worst part about stitching with metallics. And they tangle and they knot and they're really hard to get apart. And by the end of it, you're just screaming and pulling your hair out. These are some of my silks. I was going to see if we could kind of just by visual see the difference between the matte and the gloss. Now that there um, is matte silk. And you, as you can see, it kind of looks like cotton and it it's just feels, it feels a little bit like the water lilies. It doesn't feel as, um, feels just a little bit softer than cotton. Um, this would be the easier one to stitch with for those that were wondering. Out of the two that I've got on site, the matte is the easiest one to stitch with. Um, this one here is the gloss and it's very shiny and as I was saying to you last week if you've got um, a broken nail or something and a little tiny bit of that cotton gets oh not cotton it's silk gets stuck in your fingernail and it kind of shreds the thread a little bit um, I find it really easy to stitch with though it's just one of those annoying ones like chronic where um, if you get it snagged on something it's just a pain a pain to to use so that's a mat and again this is a that's the gloss can you kind of see the difference in the shine um, that's probably the biggest difference it's the, and it even feels really different so that's yeah that's the matte and that's the the gloss silk um, so they're just some of mine that I had laying around so that's a lot like Gillian's Sugar Plum and Threadworks, I guess. I've got the, had to do the very, very, very hot pink. And what I've done with threads is I've only, um, well, most of them are the same as fabric colours. And you, you'll recognise, um, you know, that's Dreams, which is the same as the fabric. And that's Rocket Queen and that's Gold Digger and that's Riders on the Storm and that's, blue moon maybe or my island home i know i've got two and i can only tell the difference when they're side by side and that's emerald city i do have some that um are old fabrics that aren't on the side anymore that i do want to bring back i just need the time to go through them where this was like black velvet um people that were there from the very beginning will remember that i had the hot pink and black fabric which I'm going to do again because I'm going to change the pink because I think this will be my, that's my colours, pink and black. Um, I have to bring it back. So I had that right in the, that was one of the very first fabrics I ever bought out, but they're available in the silks. See that? I've got a little bit of rough skin on my finger from sticking a needle in it and just touching that and it's stuck to it. It gets caught in it and and it, yeah so that's the only problem that I found with that silk but it's so beautiful to stitch with and I'm doing the freebie heart of hearts in the silk um, and I'm doing in the gloss silk and I'm doing the bohemes um, the Indian dream catcher and her tattoo in that as well I haven't got anything started with the mat yet but I will because I think it's going to be nicer to stitch with. And I've had so many, um, a few customers say that the matte silks are absolutely gorgeous. They love them. So that's those. Um, here's some more thread works, which I touched on this last week. Bye, Lauren. Do you want to be on TV? <laughs> um. This is Bradley's Balloons again, which is, I'll get the cotton version, which is, there's the cotton. And that is Bradley's Balloons in Overdyed Chronic by Threadworks. 
Um, so there you go. I've got them there as well. How awesome is that? And that's just overdyed chronic number four braid. So you all know, everyone that's stitched with chronic knows what that's going to be like to stitch with. So if you like that colour enough, I guess you'll persevere with that. Um, if not, you'll give it a miss. And I've got the gold, which I am going to do in, if you saw my whips video last week or the week before, I can't remember which one it was now, I've pulled some of this over-dyed chronic out to put in the Love Thy Thread Design rose that I'm doing. Um, I'm just finding that if I, I see something like this, I want to try it, so I want to incorporate it into one of my designs, um, and I'm going to give it a go. Um, a lot of you will remember, um, oh, these two were Threadwork Silk, the, um, of uh, Soir, <laughs> um, Silks by Threadworks. These two are the only two I have left. And they are in the clearance section at the moment, I'm pretty sure. Um, not going to continue stocking them unless someone specifically asks for these. They'd be a special order because they didn't really go that well. I think they're very pricey compared to other silks. And I think that my, may have been the reason for that. Um, and a lot of you may remember, and you'll all know... There was this time there when Dinky Dyes was selling off a whole heap of their stock and I was getting a heap of it for like really cheap and we were putting, I was adding it in the studio session sales. I've still got some of those left over and they are in the clearance section as well. And they are beautiful too. They're 100% silk. They're 8 metres and absolutely gorgeous really gorgeous so that's those um another thing that i am sh i have never touched these i've never stitched with them um but i hear so much about these and i'd say i've never heard anything good <laughs> but they're in just about every single mirabilia pattern and you can see how fluffy it is. So all of those girls who have used this, please comment and let us know whether you've persevered and used it, whether you've swapped it out for something else, whether you've thrown your project across the room and screamed bloody murder in frustration. Um, I want to know because I'm going to attempt it because it's in the little owl that I'm doing with Athena. Um... I'm going to attempt it because I attempt everything and I'll let you know. I'll persevere with it, I think, because I think it'll look quite cool in the actual design. Um, and, you know, that comes in all different colours. There's, like, heaps of different colours in that as well. But mainly with the Mirabilia, it's the white, black and brown, which I've got plenty of just in case the next Mirabilia comes out. Um, that has, I've just got to turn around here and stick my plug in because it's telling me I've got a low battery. Um, this is another one I love. This is, I prefer this any day. To chronic the petite treasure braid um, if you want to swap this for chronic in mirabilia's you just have to let me know there's a little note in each post I make um, I've got a conversion list that I found online I don't think it's as up-to-date as it should be I need to find a newer one because some of the treasure braid numbers are not on the list um, so, so otherwise it's a case of just having a look at what colour the chronic is and seeing what I've got, what I can find that's closest to it. But um, when I found this stuff, and I think it was Eileen Thread Pickers that um, was the one that mentioned it originally when we were 
and it comes from you know heaven and earth because a lot of the heaven and earth designs have the 032 pearl um number four braid in the patterns and i went i hate the number four um trinic so i automatically go to blending filament because i find it so much easier to stitch with um karen young one of our friends in here she instead of doing the blending filament she used to just pull out the um the glittery part of the crinic because you know how it's like there's it's about three strands one strands cotton one strands the glittery bit and there's another strand of something else she used to just pull that strand out of the number four and use that and that's pretty much exactly like using blending filament but this stuff is so much easier it's so much nicer to work with um I've got loads of that. Um, and another one that I've just started bringing in is... I'm going to get Amber to start bagging all this up. Bagging it all back up again for me. Um, which someone asked for. I don't know what it goes in. Just any bag. Is the Glisten Gloss. The rainbow... It's a bit like blending filament. It's exactly like Rain Petite Treasure Braid. Um, it's exactly the same and again that's I haven't stitched with this one yet because I've only just bought this one in um, I would guess if anyone's used it that this is just like the treasure braid and much easier than Krynik um, and of course I've got all the regular DMC um, so that's just a little demo on all of the threads. I pulled this out earlier because um, there's threads in here as well. I This is how I've been storing the Krynix that I have started to use on various projects. You can see all the different um, thicknesses. Like That's obviously a cord. or No, that's number eight. That's how thick that is compared to say that which came out of my wizard kit that I did which I think was a dimensions again um, to apply little um, embellishments to the finished project and this is blending filament so um, it's hard to get a picture of you can see how thin that is by it tucked in there Compared to say, um, I'll get a number four. That's blending filament. That's blending filament. Compared to the number four, you can see how yuck that is. <laughs> I don't want to say yuck because it serves a purpose. Um, some people love it. I just don't. So I'm going to put, this is where my treasures were stored as well. So I'm going to start putting these treasures that I've got in here in the new, one of these empty rows um, in the bead storage box. So that will leave me with just a box with um, Krynik. And I saw um, a few girls were getting their a few Aussies were getting their friends in America to buy ammo boxes like to store bullets because they're the perfect size to sit upright um, with the Krynik so American girls there's an idea if you can go get an ammo box your Krynik's going to fit perfectly in and we can't I mean we probably can get them somewhere here in Australia but we just um you probably have to go looking for them. Although I did hear Masters sell stuff like that. So Masters with it closing down might be a, a nice way to go and have a look. And I've also got a box. I've got my Master set of DMC. But I've also got a box that's just got um, the water lilies that I've used in here. So this is why when I do the Mirabilia post, um, you, you've got the option of getting the embellishment pack with or without the water lilies because you may very likely already have some of the water lilies that are required in the next chart. So there's no point buying a whole new um, skein of water lilies if you've got a nice big chunk of it left. 
you might be able to get through the chart with what you already have left. So that's why there's that option with the Mirabilia. Um, okay, so back to me. We're nearly finished. I'm sorry it's taken so long. But I did promise that we would do a, um, a code for the website for those who um, watch the video. The only people that are going to know about it, unless you tell your friends, uh, um, is going to be if you watch the video. And I've made the code. I'm just going to turn the computer on. I want to get Amber to hold it. And I will show you. This is the code. Can you move forward towards the camera? It is Threadlust and that code is available on the website until the 10th of September which is next Saturday and then Sunday there will be a new code for something else. Now that code will apply to any thread or every single thread except the clearance items um, that are on the website and it also applies to Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks Designs because I thought if you want a good some threads you need a good design that'll go with it and I personally think that Alessandra Adelaide charts um, are designs to go with variegated thread um, so I'm pretty sure that that is it. I'm going to go through the comments because I haven't even looked yet. So I'm going to see if there's any more questions. Um, so if you've got anything, ask now. Um, let me just go and have a look. Everyone's hi, hi, hi. Belinda, thanks for doing that. It's good to know there is no difference. There is absolutely no difference but price. Spotlight's going to work out a little bit dearer. But again, $5 is not that much if you want to have it right now. If you want to go to Spotlight and get it right now, it's going to cost you five bucks more. And well, actually it might not. I mean, it depends how you buy it because if you're only going to buy one little, one or two packets of the containers, and by the way, there is all different size containers available at Spotlight. Um, they're not just the tiny ones. There's huge ones, there's medium sized ones, there's small ones. I'm going to stick with the tiny because they fit the bead. They fit a couple of packets of beads in them really well. Um, oh, the only difference, there is one difference. The American one, which um, I don't know if I wrote it down. I didn't write down the actual brand name. It's Elizabeth something. Um, I'm pretty sure that the other brands, it's Elizabeth something. But the only difference is that brand, the non-spotlight brand, has a um, couple of sheets of label 